Hey guys, today we're going to be covering number bases and looking at some examples to show how we can convert between them. As humans, we're used to representing numbers in a certain way, but there are actually loads of different ways that we can do it. We tend to use base 10 to count numbers, using 0 to 9 to represent the digits, and all the numbers in the number system are made up of combinations of these digits. But why is this? Well, it might be because we have 10 fingers, one for each digit, giving us a tool that we can naturally use to count. Well, what about a computer? Seeing as they don't have any fingers, it might be easier for them to represent numbers in a different way. Binary numbers, which are base 2, only use two characters for each digit, either a 0 or a 1, which can be represented with a high or low current, and much like base 10, we can combine these to make any number. The last base we're going to be looking at today is hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is base 16, this means we have 16 different digits to represent a number. As with base 10, we have 0 through 9, and then A to F to represent decimal numbers 10 through 15. So we end up with a number that might look something like this. The number might not mean anything to you at the moment, but we'll come to understand it a bit later in the video. The advantage to using hexadecimal is that it uses far less digits to represent the same number when compared to other bases like decimal, and it's easy to convert from binary to hexadecimal, so it makes for great shorthand. So we're going to start out by taking a look at how we can convert binary numbers to human readable decimal numbers. It can seem pretty daunting when you first start out, but I promise you'll get the hang of it fairly quickly. Binary numbers work much the same as decimal numbers, in that the value of each digit gets smaller the further right of the number we go. For example, let's take decimal number 110. We know that for decimal numbers, the rightmost column represents 1s, the next 10s, and the third column 100s, and so on. We might choose to represent this as 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 2, etc. And the same is actually true for binary numbers, except because they're base 2, rather than 10 to the power 0, it's 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, and so on. Working out these powers of 2 give you the number that each column represents. So in this case, it's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. We're using 8 digits to represent the binary number as it creates a whole byte of data. Knowing this, we can work out the decimal equivalent of this binary value. We do this by simply adding together the values of the columns containing a 1, while ignoring the columns containing a 0. So in this case, we'll have 64 plus 32 plus 8 plus 1, which gives us a result of 105. The binary number here carries the exact same meaning as 105. It's just expressed with a different number base, in this case, base 2. Now that we know how we can convert binary numbers into decimal, let's take a look at it the other way around. Let's try to work out the binary number for decimal 75. This process is done working our way from left to right, checking if each possible binary value is less than or equal to our target value, which is 75. We'll start at the leftmost column and check if the value is less than or equal to our target number, which in this case it isn't, so we'll put a 0 in that column. Moving on, we'll see that 64 is less than 75, so we'll set this column to a 1 and subtract 64 from our target number to tell us how far off the current binary value is that we've got from our target number. After this subtraction, we can see that the binary number still needs an extra 11. So now when we're doing the comparisons, instead of checking if a column is less than 75, we'll check if it's less than 11. 32 is not less than 11, so we'll put a 0 in this column and do the same for 16. 8 is less than 11, so we'll put a 1 in this column and again subtract 8 from 11 to give us 3. Now we're checking if these values are less than or equal to 3, which of course 4 is not, so we'll put a 0 in the column. 2 is less than 3, so we'll put a 1 in there. And once again, take 2 away from 3 to tell us that we still need to make up 1. And obviously, 1 is less than or equal to 1, so we'll fill that column in with another 1. And this gives us our final binary representation of 75. So moving on, let's take a look at converting from binary to hexadecimal. We know that one hexadecimal value can represent 0 to 15, much in the same way that we can do with a combination of four binary values. So we'll start off by splitting our binary value into 4-bit nibbles. So in this case, we'll have 1110 in the first nibble, and 1001 in the other. 
So just like we did before, we're going to convert these nibbles into a decimal number so that we can work out the hexadecimal equivalent. For this first nibble, we'll have 8 plus 4 plus 2, which gives us 14. As we know, hexadecimal represents the numbers 10 through 15 with letters of the alphabet, so 14 in hexadecimal is E. We then do the same for the second nibble, which in this case is just 8 plus 1. 9 is represented the same way in both hexadecimal and decimal, so all that's left to do now is concatenate these two values and we're left with our final hexadecimal value. Let's say that we have a hexadecimal value and we want to work out what the decimal equivalent would be. The easiest path to doing this is actually to convert to binary numbers first. So we split our hexadecimal number into its digits and then convert those individually to binary nibbles. So we know that the binary for E, or 14 in decimal, can be worked out by checking if each binary heading value is less than or equal to our target and setting a 1 in the nibble if it is and a 0 if it isn't. The result of this is that we're left with 1110 for 14 and 1001 for 9. Now that we have these binary nibbles, we can concatenate them together in the same way we did for our final hex value, and when converting them to binary, we get 11101001. Then all we need to do is move from left to right, adding the binary heading values as we go, and you'll see here that E9 in decimal is 233. Finally, we're going to take a look at converting decimal to hexadecimal. It's the exact same process as converting from hexadecimal to decimal, but it's in reverse. So we start with our decimal number, which in this case is 94. We convert it to binary, so 94 isn't less than 128, so we put 0 in the column. 64 is less than or equal to 94, so we put in a 1. 32 isn't less than 30, so we put in a 0. 16 is less than 30, so we put in a 1. And 8 is less than 14, so once again, we put in a 1. 4 is less than 6, so another 1, and finally 2 equals 2, so the last one is in there, and there we have our binary number. We split this up into 4-bit nibbles, and add them together to give us our hex values, so 4 plus 1 is 5, and 8 plus 4 plus 2 equals 14, which as we know is E in hexadecimal. We then concatenate those together to give us our final answer, which is 5E. So we know what the different bases are, but how is someone just looking at this supposed to know if it's 10, 2 or 16? We can use subscript relating to the base to make it clear for what it is. So for binary, we'd have a 2, for decimal, it would be 10, and for hexadecimal, it would be 16. We hope this video has been useful. Of course, there are other ways of achieving some of these conversions, but what we've covered today are the simplest, and it should give you a good grounding on how to do these kind of operations. Thanks for listening.